This is Lab 13 and in Lab 13 we do all of our work that stems from the children's questions. Um, I'm going to be working with a group of your three children, so they're all about seven and eight, and where our topic is uh, forces. So this group have already done a circus of activities with their class teacher to introduce the topic and as um, a type of kind of a way to see what the children already know and what um, aspects they kind of struggle with. So one of the things that was raised during that sex of activities was that children um, found it very difficult to understand how their different shapes moved through water, especially with regard to their hand, and they had a lot of misconceptions. Um, so that's something we're going to try and address today and answer their question why their hand moves differently in water when it's in different shapes. When we're in Lab 13, we try to do everything as practically as possible. It's very easy to answer a child's question with information. Um, but our ethos is that everything is hands-on, children do it for themselves and that they come to the answer themselves through their practical work rather than coming and just listening to the answer, they find it out for themselves. So we'll be doing a lot of work, um, we'll be modelling um, different shapes, we'll be trying to relay to real life, we've got some swimming things from the pond for them to look at shapes and observe how different things move in water and to kind of think about their shapes and they'll be designing their own models um, to look at how well they do and don't travel in the water. The seahorse. Why did you shape it like a seahorse? <laughs> what else? No, you got that big tree. The seahorses move in water, don't they? So, which one? How does a seahorse move? He kind of goes forwards like that, doesn't he? So he must be streamlined this way, and he's got thinner and Camilla and Holly, you have figured out something very important. And I think you two, you showed this as well with your work, didn't you? Okay. And um, could you talk us through what happened with what you were trying to show and trying to prove? And we thought it was because it's more, it uses up more space mm -hmm. and um, it, you have to have more force to pull it up and there's more water molecules um, above it and it's much harder to pull it up. Okay. Hmm. Have any of you ever been to, um, um, you know, those adventure centres where there's loads of balls? No. And they're like in slides, and there's lots and lots yeah. of holes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Have you ever laid on top of them? I'm really flat. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 You stay on top, don't you, for a little yeah. while? Yeah. No, but then when you're lying yeah. flat, you stay on top, don't you? Yes. Yes. Right. It's just like that oh, because when I'm swimming, mm -hmm. I stay up um, uh, under water. I don't yeah. know because when I'm like diving. I don't know why I don't stay up on the water. But Camilla, up. you've figured out why. You've, you're, you've just proved what that answer. You've just found the answer to that. It's all about the shape of your body. Think about it. Well, you know when you're lying on your back in the water, yeah. what shape are you in? You're like a star. You're spread out like this. And your body is touching much more water molecules. So if you're going to 